The old dark house from 1932 is one of the weirdest, goofiest of the old Universal classic horror films I've ever seen. It's really hard to categorize this one because it wasn't necessarily a monster and it's not even really a haunted house, but you know what, I'll do my best with this. So the film opens up, it's a dark and stormy night. We have Philip Waverton, who's played by Raymond Macy. And I saw him recently in the movie The Santa Fe Trail, playing the wild John Brown, of all people. Great performance. And he's married to Margaret, who's played by Gloria Stewart, who, very interesting to me, was Old Rose in the movie Titanic. So, interesting. Here she's about 20-something years old. They're driving through the rain. They're kind of quarreling together. And Melvin Douglas plays Penderell, a guy who's just along with them for the ride for some reason, and he's sitting in the back seat making humorous little remarks. I don't think I've seen him in anything just yet, but, you know, give it time. I'm sure I will see him again in one of these old films. Well, they're having a hard time with their driving, with the road being washed away and whatnot, so they find an old dark house. They knock, and Boris Karloff answers the door, and he's in his full-on freaky attire. His character, Morgan, is this massive, bearded man. You know, most crazy people are bearded. And he's covered with scars and mumbling. He lets him in, and they're soon greeted by Horace Femme, played by Ernest Thesiger, none other than Dr. Pretorius himself, you know, from Bride of Frankenstein. So right there, this film hit awesome levels for me. <laughs> well, the interior of the house it's huge, it's creepy, and the detail is incredible. I love it. Horace introduces his sister, Rebecca Femme. She's played by Eva Moore, and she's a little deaf and also a little crazy. And she comes scurrying down to meet the visitors. And we learn that Horace has something of this mad scientist vibe to him, while Rebecca is just this weirdly puritanical woman. They have dinner and there's this crazy banter between the two of them as she tells him off for being blasphemous for forgetting to say grace you know <laughs> this is followed by Horace casually offering to have a potato <laughs> I love it this house is crazy and as weird as it sounds the dinner scene is very carefully detailed and everyone seems to be enjoying the meal especially old Rebecca who's really digging those pickled onions and honestly the roast beef bread, the potatoes. It all looks so delicious, and it's weird. I'm watching this scene, and I was expecting, you know, maybe something more ominous, like a dark revelation or something, but no, they just all sit there and enjoy their meal. <laughs> so dinner is interrupted by a knock at the door, and another young couple arrives, and soon we'll join them for dinner. And it's Sir William Porterhouse. <laughs> I love the names here. Played by Charles Lawton. You know, this is Mr. Christian from the Mutiny on the Bounty film. And he's with Gladys, played by Lillian Bond, and they join in for dinner. And after the meal, they all have a nice smoke by the fireplace because, you know, that's what you did back then. And there's some, you know, lively conversation as they get to know each other. However, we do get word that Morgan has been drinking. And there's a little fear that he does tend to get crazy when drunk. Penderell, meanwhile, he goes to get a bottle of whiskey from his car in the rain with Gladys. Horace and Philip, meanwhile, they head upstairs to get another lamp. But Horace kind of freaks out, I guess, of his own upstairs and leaves, and Philip has to do this alone. Meanwhile, Margaret is doing shadow puppets on the wall. It's kind of a cute scene when Rebecca spooks her and she runs off and soon has an encounter with the drunken Morgan who pursues her. And you know, this is pre-code era, folks, so not sure what's going to happen, but thankfully, Philip confronts him, and they get into a fight, but come on, this is little Philip, and he's fighting Morgan, Boris Karloff here. Come on, punches are useless against him, but a lamp to the head does the trick, and Morgan tumbles down the stairs. You know, meanwhile, this film, which is all over the place, takes us back and shows Pendrel and Gladys they're getting cozy in this car and they're talking romantically and apparently they've instantly fallen in love. Meanwhile, Philip and Margaret discover a very old man locked away in a room. And I'm pretty sure actually in 
this was a woman wearing a beard <laughs> with with makeup and it's very uncomfortable looking makeup too it's like something the mummy would have worn and you know sure enough in researching this film the bearded guy was indeed played by a woman Elspeth Dudgeon really cool name and he tells them her story about this character Saul who is yet another character in this crazy old house and he's locked up in a mysterious room they can't let him out and the guests all confer together about the weird happenings going on and sure enough Morgan went and let Saul out of his room. So they wrestle Morgan down and they lock him up. But finally we meet Saul and, well, he's just this little bearded guy. <laughs> Initially isn't very frightening at all. But soon he starts talking to Pendrel alone. And gradually we get the vibe that, yeah, he's pretty crazy. And he talks about how he studies flames. And he wants to throw a knife, just like Saul from the Bible threw a knife at David. And... After he actually does so and almost kills Pendrel, he starts laughing maniacally and attempts to burn the house down. <laughs> well, he and Pendrel get into a big fight, and well, you know, I, I don't even know where to go with the summary of this film. I'll let you just catch the conclusion. Will our cast of heroes manage to escape? Will the drunken Morgan break free and cause more trouble? Can Pendrel stop the pyromaniac tendencies of Crazy Saul? Well, you got to watch this one to find out for yourself. So some quick closing thoughts. You know, one of the interesting bits of trivia about this was it was directed by James Whale, who was famed for directing three of the most epic of the Universal Monster films, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, and The Invisible Man. But I'm really not sure where this film falls in. Because, like I mentioned before, it's not really a haunted house. There isn't really a monster. And in fact, there isn't one main villain to the film. It's just a bunch of crazy eclectic people living in the house. And they just get crazier as you meet them. But there's really no mad scientist or anything like that. It's just a, a, a nutty house. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing. It looks and feels like a universal monster film. The sets, the acting, everything about it. And in fact, a lot of the big names, you know, like Boris Karloff, really give it that vibe but at the same time, it feels something completely different. It's spooky, but has some romance and quirkiness that I don't even know how to categorize, but you know, it was a lot of fun. Something interesting I read from the Turner Classics movie site is that when director James Cameron was watching an old copy of this film and listening to the audio commentary with Gloria Stewart, he was so impressed by her that he cast her in the movie Titanic in 1997. You know, I think she was around 22 in this film, so that would have put her in her 80s for Titanic. And, man, isn't it weird to consider that Titanic is now 25 years old as well? Oh, where did the time go? Now, anyhow, that's the old Dark House from 1932. It is a wild, <laughs> universal horror film, but I really enjoyed it, and it's worth checking out. Another thought is I love seeing Boris Karloff in these films, and even though he doesn't have a huge role here... His part of the film is still creepy and awesome. And it's interesting how his appearance here as this big, bearded, creepy guy, it actually reminded me of an old Charles Adams cartoon where a vacuum cleaner salesman comes to visit the house. <laughs> I don't know. That's just the first thing it reminded me of. 